uh, so they were hungry for information, and so that they had their their uh, uh, initial meetings, and uh, slowly the team uh, was brought together uh, and put into a, 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 a camps in in, in southern in, in Bavaria, and eventually uh, key members of those team uh, were given. Uh, uh, Consulting contracts. They were considered prisoners of peace. They were they weren't military people, and so they were they volunteered uh, to uh, come to the United States, and they were sent to the United States. It's a long story, but I'll say they ended up in Fort Bliss, Texas, and uh, they the team eventually got up to about 120. Von Brown said he'd like to have 500. Well, the army said, "God, oh, I mean, and th this was not." legal immigration at all. These were prisoners brought by the War Department uh, to the United States on a temporary basis. So uh, anyway, the team arrives. They told them where the documentation was. They sent trucks out to get the documentation. They knew where the missiles were. They were in a place called the Millwork Factory. And that was to be uh, turned over to the Russians. But the Russians hadn't, uh, uh, near Nordhaus in Germany. And the Russians hadn't gotten that far in. Yet. So the very, it's, uh, this whole story is about this, how they, uh, young lieutenants under the colonels and so forth, were able to get their trucks in there and they retrieved, um, manufactured but not deployed uh, V2s, uh, equipment equal more or less to 100 rockets which they could reassemble in the United States, out, out snatched them out, almost under the nose of the Russians, and they were shipped out of Am Antwerp and uh, New Orleans and so forth. So uh, the team arrives, their missiles were sent to the White Sam's proving ground. We had a proving ground there, which we've done some modest work, work ourselves during the war. And so those missiles were eventually assembled. They were brought up from New Orleans on a series of flat cars, truck, flat car trucks. And some came up by rail. And uh, they were stored there and refurbished and uh, demilitarized. They didn't, no, no longer they, want, they didn't want to abattoir high explosives. They wanted to take that whole cone area for instrumentation. And then the team settled into uh, Fort Bliss, Texas. And uh, Brazzy learned some English and set up their, their officers' club and more or less. You know, and they were happy. The Germans, this team was very advanced technology, knew that they were, we were, because we were still fighting the war with Japan, and they wanted to come to America. To continue to their dreams, and Von Braun's dream was upstairs, space. And so uh, they were very anxious to you know, accommodate and work their way in. We needed them urgently, the Army needed them, and uh, so they extended their contract to about a year. And then slowly the, the wheels ground, the, there was complaints from the sort of members of the State Department and from the, it became known they were there, but they were not there legally. So they eventually took the whole team, crossed the, uh, the river uh, at, at the border, at El, at El Paso, Texas, and then they officially went to the American consulate there, and they immigrated to the United States on trolley cars. <laughs> you know, we look at our ancestors, they came from England and boats, you know, whatever. They came in by trolley cars, so they were now legal, they, they, they could work under permits, they had sort of a green card kind of thing. They didn't get their citizenship uh, until considerably later. And uh, the team stayed there until 1950. And then we got into war with Korea, and the Army needed the, the area that they were housed in. Because that was, they'd been deactivated after World War II, but now prisoners are coming back, wounded soldiers are coming back. So, and the Germans were anxious to get away from the desert. They were used to their green fields in Germany. And so uh, eventually, that's a long story of how it happened, but they ended up in Huntsville, Alabama. It was a, there was a, a big, two big, arsenals tied together. One was called Huntsville Arsenal, where the chemical corps was making the ingredients for bazookas and artillery shells and bombs and so forth for the Army Air Force for the ordnance and so forth. And there was a, an ordnance uh, part of it where the chemical corps delivered the ingredients to the bazooka shells, to the bomb shells, you know, to the artillery shell. And uh, so that was very busy doing, uh, had been very busy doing World War II, but it had been deactivated. In fact, it was out for sale. Uh, the team settled in there, and they were loved to be there. They settled in in 1950, 
uh, in Huntsville, Alabama. Many of them lived up top, up, up top of, a, of a mountain called Monte Sano. And uh, uh, they, they reactivated some of the buildings and built new buildings of uh, Redstone also. And they beat, they, it's not flight tests, but it's, it's, it's uh, static tests of the engines were built there and so on. But they would continue to fl fly things out of white sand. And uh, so they settled in. Uh, the war was going on, but Brown was becoming more proficient in English, and they were they began to become almost part of society. They were welcomed by the Alabamians, and that they, the whole team got a mass citizenship around 1953, I think it was. And so they were there. Their, their families came over uh, from the Bavaria holding uh, uh, point, and so the German colony, uh, they, let's say 120 Germans, roughly. Some came afterwards. And, the focus that were there left were, 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 say, 125 Germans and their families, the scientists, the cream of the crop, uh, were in Huntsville, Alabama. And the Cold War conveniently began. And uh, so the Army wanted to upgrade the, uh, the V 2 rocket, and that upgrade became the Redstone rocket, about a 200 mile range, but nuclear tipped. Uh, then the Army decided they needed further range so they could uh, mount these missiles in places like Turkey and, and uh, in Italy with, in range with a 1500 mile range, which became the Jupiter. So we had a Jupiter rocket. And uh, that went on through the, the 50s. When Brown, by 1952, 50, 51, and 52, was beginning to make his presence known. 